Yeah, my name's Bob Brandon, and I'm a native of Butler, Pennsylvania. And except for seven years of my life, I lived uh, all my life in Butler. Um, became interested in cars probably when I was a kid because we always built soapbox derbies. My mother called them coasters. And then we added motors, whether it be off of Maytag washer, Briggs and Stratton uh, lawnmower engine. And then it was probably when I was about 13 years old, the word Bantam went into my ears for the first time. And as I think back, I think the evening that I heard the word Bantam, uh, I know I was in the car by myself with my dad, and he'd always make a run into town in the evening to pick up the evening paper. And there was something that was happening uh, this one particular day in Diamond Park, right in the heart of downtown Butler. And it was probably November the 11th of 1960 when they dedicated the Jeep Monument and Roy Evans was in town. Because I asked my dad, there was a reviewing stand there and they had the parade, and I asked my dad what that monument was all about. And he said, well, Butler is the home of the Jeep. And in 1960, I was 13 years old, and here I am, 67 today, remembering something I heard uh, 53 years ago. But uh, I, I was inquis inquisitive, and I said, uh, well, how did that happen? And he said, well, there was a small car company in Butler called the Bantam Car Company, and when the war was breaking out, they invented the very first Jeep. And I just felt, you know, very excited to know that this little town that I was living in was famous for something, you know. And back in those days, the Jeep wasn't really the vehicle that it is today. I remember in high school, if you were 17 years old and you drove to school in a Jeep, you were a farm boy or, a, you, know, a, you know, somebody that wasn't in the in crowd. But, of course, that's all changed now that we're here into... Uh, you know, the uh, uh, 2013 era. But uh, those were my first memories of Bantam, Jeep, knowing it was made in Butler. And the sad thing is my dad really couldn't tell me much more than that. You know, he uh, was a lifelong resident of Butler and only had that little bit of history. The Jeep was done here in Butler. That's what the monument was about that they dedicated today. And uh, he didn't know a whole lot about the Bantam Car Company. So all these years went by and I had no idea that there was even any Bantam cars out there. And fast forward to the 1970s and my wife and I moved to Fort Wayne, Indiana. And I remember when I was working for uh, the radio station out there, somebody learned that I was in antique cars and they told me in uh, late summer of 72, Bob, you and your wife should go up to Auburn this weekend. They have a big car show up there. So we went up to Auburn, and at that time, Auburn was only maybe seven or eight years old. It was still at the high school. They had a small auction at the stadium. But I realized that all these people came to Auburn to see the Cord, the Duesenberg, and the Auburn cars. So in 1978, when we moved back to Butler, I found out in the meantime that there were still a lot of these Bantam cars around. And there was a gentleman by the name of Jake Hoffman who had a Bantam car. And I was in the Lions Club, and we were looking for a project to do, a community betterment project. And I said, you know, when I lived in, in Fort Wayne, they had this big car show in Auburn, and I wonder how many Bantams are out there, and could we have a reunion of these Butler cars here locally? Well, I'll go down to Hoffman Auto Parts and talk to Jake Hoffman. So in, uh, I think it was around 1980, uh, he said, yeah, we're hosting the Austin Bantam meet here in Butler this summer. And uh, it was down at what was the Holiday Inn, now the Days Inn. And the people of the Lions Club uh, put on a spaghetti dinner for all the people in town. And we also helped park the cars in the parking lot mm -hmm. and direct people into the Holiday Hall. And the cars were actually indoors. Chet Hempfling was there that night who uh, was one of the guys who worked on the Jeep and had worked all of his life at Austin Bantam back to the point where the car company began. 
And that's where I met Chet Hensley. And I think uh, that evening in the summer of 1980, there were probably 45 Austin Bantam cars, but no Bantam Jeeps, no BRCs. And uh, there was one guy from New York that had an Austin for sale. It was a coupe, a 1930 coupe. And I told my wife, we can't let that car leave town. So that was the first time that I bought into the Austin Bantam car collection thing. And then I added several more. Now getting into my BRC days, we'll jump ahead to uh, about 1990. And I went to Hershey and somebody said, Bob, there's a BRC for sale. And it was a real muddy Hershey, which has mm. really come many times uh, over the years. And just as I got to the row where the BRC was, there's this guy driving up the aisle, leaving for the day, and his BRC was just kicking up mud all over the place. And I stopped him and I said, did you sell that car? And he said, no. He said, I think I'm going to take it home. And I said, well, give, you, give me your name and number and I'll give you mine. And I said, if you change your mind, give me a call. And his name was Frank Buck. And, uh, he actually owned the car twice, if I remember correctly. Hmm. He had it, sold it, and then bought it back. And it came out of the Harris Collection in Reno, and then went to the Domino Collection in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and then Frank got it from there. So sure enough, uh, within a year, Frank called me and said, are you still interested in the, uh, the BRC? And I said, yeah. I said, I'd, uh, I'd still want to buy that. And I'll, I'll give the price, I paid $19,000 for it, and drove to his home in uh, Mountain Home, uh, Pennsylvania, up near the Poconos, and we hauled it back in March of 1991, which was exactly 50 years from the month and year it was built in March of 1941. So I always thought that was pretty neat. and. Uh, trying to think if that was the first BRC to come back to Butler. I'm, no, no, that's not correct. Mine was like the second because Lee Bortmus, who restored four or five of these BRCs, was already into it mm. and he had done one or two already. So mine was probably the third to come back and I never really did anything with it. Uh, it was starting to show its wear from being uh, in well, being in the mud at Hershey and uh, the guy up in Ann Arbor probably never did anything with it. But it is the Jeep that Bill Spear now has for purpose of this video. And uh, it was in the Automobile Quarterly that uh, was put out in the 1970s. And now uh, George Domer wrote the history of the Austin, the Bantam, and the BRC. So the picture in that Automobile Quarterly is BRC number one. 911. So, and uh, I just had too many things going on. Not that I lost interest. There was never any Bantam show every year in Butler, which I wanted to do, like uh, I saw them do in, in Auburn. And every time I'd argue the point to the club, you know, let's do it every year in Butler and maybe we can do some mini shows and it was always voted down and then I brought up well can we do it every five years so I can tell the Chamber of Commerce that on this year that's coming back and I know that this is going to be the and they voted that down and it just seemed like uh, I was running out of steam and uh, I decided I need to get rid of one of these vehicles and I never served in the military maybe my heart would have been into it a little bit more if I had and I sold it to Bill Spear. He gave me what I thought was a fair price to give him some money to bring it up to what it should be. And then, lo and behold, two or three years later, our friend Jack Cohen from the Butler County Travel and Convention Bureau comes up with the idea of having the Bantam uh, Heritage Jeep Festival, which is now three years old and just as a huge event. And I, I kind of kicked myself for not having BRC 1911 anymore. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it.